That's right, Stacey. Well, first off, everyone is okay. The man tells us he was asleep when the fire began, but all of it was caught on camera. Yeah, John, that is based on the damage assessments from the surveys team's first day on the ground here in Adair County, but officials say they're going to spend the next several days here, and that could change just because of all the damage around us. Right behind us is Highway 92 east-west through town. In the distance, you can see a mattress hanging in a tree and a Jeep Patriot there just upside down in somebody's front yard. Over there, there's also, uh, I spotted a, a washing machine. And, and the destruction this morning is just expansive. In the last hour since the sun has come up, it's shown light on exactly how much damage there is. In the distance, you can see homes where the second story is just lopped off the top of the home. The tornado passed right through here. And then right in front of us is another home where even the main floor is gone. All that's left is a hole in the ground with uh, heating and cooling units in the basement as well as tables that used to maybe be on the first floor. Now they're sitting in a pile of rubble here. Alyssa, what are they cooking up for you? The blue ribbon goes to the What's Your Cheese Grilled Cheese, and we're right here where all the magic happens. I'm here with Chef Jimmy. We have this delicious sandwich right here, too. And this is all really big production, Jimmy. What has gone into these past few days? Well, we have about 25 people on staff at any given time just to keep up with production constantly. I mean, we have about 10 people in the back making the sandwiches, four or five in here serving the sandwiches, and then we got a team of about 10 handing them out. So it's just constantly just wheeling and dealing. It really is Food a team out. effort, right? Absolutely. If I didn't have my team, we couldn't be successful, that's for sure. Well, congratulations to every single one of you. Can you get this sandwich anywhere else except I, State Fair? Actually, no. This is just going to be a State Fair exclusive. We want it to be something that people are excited about all year long. Get to come here and try it and enjoy it during the fair. Awesome. Well, you heard it here first, guys. You can only get this at the State Fair. Oh, look at that cut. It looks delicious. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Have We're going to have to get a little sample of that. Who says you can't have grilled cheese for breakfast? Oh, <laughs> Live at the State Fairgrounds, Alyssa Gomez, KCCI News, Iowa's News Leader. The people who live on this side of the road have always used the land on this side as their access to the lake. But when Calhoun County filed their lawsuit, they say this land doesn't belong to the homeowners at all. This is the small strip of land along the lake that Calhoun County says belongs to them, despite the homeowners operating as if it was theirs. You can see through Sky 8's lens they've built private patios and docks that have been here for years. Even this year, Two or three of our uh, uh, neighbors did improvements and got permits, and everything was fine. Homeowner Reese Morrissey says this battle has been going on for about five years, but he was just notified about the lawsuit filed by the county earlier this month. He says they're not sure why the county wants ownership of the land. We've asked that several times, and we never get a reply back. This is a public lake. It's a public resource. It should be enjoyed by all of us. Special Assistant County Attorney John Worden filed the lawsuit on behalf of Calhoun County and says this map of lots proves ownership does not extend beyond the pavement. Worden also claims the structures built along the road could be traffic hazards. He says the county is willing to set up a dock management plan with the homeowners. Shouldn't you or your son or your daughter be able to go up to that lake and put a fishing pole in the water? And you see how the lines extend across the road? Another homeowner, Bill Stevenson, says the abstracts on their homes show their property lines do extend all the way to the lake. And the legal description says it includes all the land up to the high water line. Stevenson says without the lakeside access that they've been paying taxes for, their property values would plummet. Unfortunately, out here, that slice of land is everything. Without that slice of land, these properties are, are, are really worthless. In Twin Lakes, Bo Bowman, KCCI 8 News, Iowa's News Leader. Judy Clark says the memory of March 5th will be imprinted in her mind forever. I looked up and you could still see stuff twirling in the air above me and it was, it was crazy. When they heard the storm was headed their way, Judy and her husband Rodney rushed to hide in the bathtub. The tornado was so powerful, she says they were thrown 100 feet from the tub. I must have blacked out. I must have done something because the next thing I know, I hit the embankment. Once she regained consciousness, he was just out of reach. 
and I couldn't touch him, but I could see that he was deceased, but I couldn't, I couldn't touch him at all. Judy and Rodney were married for more than 22 years. Life without him has been difficult. In a day, you're grieving, you're sad, you're what ifs, or why did this happen, or why, did, why him and not me. While Judy experienced an emotional roller coaster day to day, she rebuilt their house and tried to make it a home without her lifelong partner. Even though Rodney is no longer in this world, he is still here. I carry him with me. Yeah, he comes with me. So, yeah, he's always with me. Outside, this metal bird sits by the driveway. Its chime rings and echoes through Carver Road. That spot is where Rodney took his last breath, but Judy says he's never far away. If I feel a kick or a pinch, then it's like, uh-oh, what did I do this time? <laughs> During the storm, the couple's dog, Millie, was also swept away. But neighbors miraculously found her days later. Yep, she's my savior. Understandably, Judy says storms are now scary for both of them. If we're in bed, she'll come up and we'll cuddle. And, you know, I don't know who's shaking worse, her or me. Through it all, every day is one step forward. I appreciate what I have more than I can ever tell anybody. For him to shield me like that or try to shield me, you know, to, to do that, it had to be love. An infinite amount of love forever in her heart until Rodney and Judy meet again someday. In Winterset, Nicole Tam, KCCI News, I was news leader. Even in the corners of our state, hours from the nearest metro, highways stay busy with trucks, traffic, and tractors. Which is why when something else takes over the shoulder, Iowans on their way to work will stop, stare, and snap pictures of the two drivers. That's my bag. You, you ate all your cookies. Chit-chatting about snacks. Crisscrossing this state they've now been in for two weeks. It's so clean. Look at your ditches. They're clean. You know, you, we go through some states and there's trash everywhere. Everywhere. But you look here, you don't even see any paper. That's Tom Nass talking. Sometimes if you want to get a word in, you got to wait till I take a breath. Beside the guy holding the reins, Carlos Ford. They want to go every morning. A Southerner who had no plans to spend today in Pocahontas County or anywhere else they've been seeing at three and a half miles an hour. He told me he wanted to go on this ride and he said, hey, you want to go with me? And I said, why not? <laughs> the better question might actually be, why? Because crossing our state in a wagon from Lamoni near the Missouri border all the way up to Minnesota and beyond takes weeks when you travel only 20 miles a day. The answer is up there over the horizon. Tom's mom, Ann Strand. They had no idea where they were going, except they were going north. 90 years ago, she made this same trip along this same route with her parents when she was only three. Covered wagon, three children, dirt road. Lamoni was too expensive for their family. They needed cheap land. My grandfather had a 1927 Model T, and he traded it for two mules and a wagon. He had $66 when they got ready to leave. On a six-week trek to build a new life, Tom's heard stories it wasn't easy. I mean, they endured storms, tornado, Mules got away. But family legends sink in different. Pouring rain out, we're in the tent. Just barely got in here before it started pouring. When you're the one stuck in a downpour. Here we are, going downtown Lamona, Iowa. Cruising Main Street behind mules. We're not quite used to sitting on the ground, but we're sleeping on the ground. A little stiff this morning. Or rising with the sun to hitch up the team. This one is uh, gypsy. This one is fancy. And that one's Dolly. Just like those who came before did, right here with mules. They get excited. 90 years ago. So every morning from Mother's Day to 4th of July. We're all cleaned up and ready to go. They've started in a farmyard or park. We're going to bust out of here. You better get in. We're fixing right. to go. And held on. All right, step up. Step up. Stay up. Uh, quit. All right, let's go. 
because Gypsy, Fancy, and Dolly want to go north. And we're off. As badly as Tom does. Here we go on our 11th day out. Because the guy who just retired has a mom who turns 93 in a few weeks. And he's determined to pull into the birthday party up in Minnesota the same way she first got there, in a covered wagon. And I'm at the point in my life where I've just put the brakes on. So whatever happens, happens. If we're broke down someplace for two weeks, so be it. We're not on no schedule. If I don't get there by her birthday, she's just going to have to understand. And it could take a while because Tom doesn't know any strangers. You know, if, if someone wants to stop and talk, I just stop. We're in Kellerton, Iowa, and we found this woman to give us some water. Along the way. Here we are. We're with the sheriff of Guthrie County. They've met Iowans. I'm Chris Bloss. I farm a uh, mile west of here. Soaked in their family stories. Uh, my great grandparents owned a section of land there. And experienced our state. We're with Chuck, the local pastor of the church. He's going to tell I've us met a little bit about so many nice people in this state. From the time we got into this state, it's unbelievable how nice the people are. I mean, everybody has a story. Including him, the guy who's spending seven weeks in a wagon with his dog and a buddy behind three mules to better appreciate his. Mom. Yeah, I think about it every day. Three and a half miles an hour is slow enough to meet hundreds of locals. I need to call the sheriff. And share thousands of their stories. <laughs> while letting it sink in. The nearly 93 year old waiting over that horizon wasn't just telling stories, she lived them. Oh, yeah. What a journey they went through. I mean, not even knowing where they're going. You know, they've never been there. And now her boy has lived them, too. I just love it. I just love it. 